Okay, so we're getting to the end of the season, so I figured I would go over some of the stuff that's kind of gone on with the sleds and with my gear overall throughout the year. Oh, that rhymed. That sounded lame. I figured I'd go over both the sleds and some of my gear and how it's kind of all played out for the season. So first things first, I did add a few things to my personal FXR collection this year. I have the M Clutch FX Pant. This is my first set of FXR bibs that I've had. Really good fit. They uh, are not zip up up the whole leg, so they only go up to probably halfway up your calf. But because of that, they don't tend to bunch up as much on the hips. Uh, overall fit feels really good. They're not the type of pant that you feel uncomfortable walking around inside in because the fit is like almost just like any other uh, type of pant you might be wearing. They come up to a little over your belly button as far as on your waist goes. So that's much more comfortable than the ones that are like halfway up your chest or even over your chest. Fits better under the jacket. And for me, that fits much better with my chest protector underneath my jacket. Okay. Next is my Helium Light Boa boot. So I got these because the overall profile of the boot is much smaller than their alternative. I kind of was worried hearing light that these would be uh, possibly a little bit cold. Maybe they were more of like a mountain boot that's meant to be more active, but these are honestly some of the warmest boots I've ever had. I haven't had to wear thermal socks all year. Uh, no water getting in, just, I mean, probably the best piece of equipment that I can remember owning in a long time. The only negative I've had is these boa ties are on the front, so as you're riding, if you kind of lean into the panels, they do tend to pop and uh, you'll get to the end of your day and they're loose, but the boots fit so good overall and they have a lot of lining in them that they don't necessarily feel like they're falling off, they're just not super tight. So. Um, but other than that, the fit's really good. The overall profile of the boot isn't huge like some of the other alternatives I've seen out there. They do still fit in the footwells, which is awesome. And I really just, I cannot say enough. If you guys are looking at boots, you gotta check out FXR's boots. One of the last things is these Core E goggles. So these are a heated goggle. I uh, have had two other pairs of FXR goggles. They've been pretty good, but you know, when you get the snow dust, not much you can do about that getting in your lenses and freezing. So these are heated, which definitely helps. The only negative I'll say is when you, you're riding, they do kind of always fog up for a second and then unfreeze. So. Um, it, it can be kind of distracting to have that second of fog and then have it clear. It does always clear, but you know if that's something that would bother you, they might not be the type of goggle for you. Other than that though, really good quality. The tint's a little dark on them, looks really good during the day, but not great at night. So um, if I had to do over again, I might get the clear ones because we do ride occasionally at night, but um, these pretty much do exactly what I want and I'm happy about the purchase. They come with the cord which is good. Uh, it's got the spiral section so it can kind of stretch out. They do have like a blue light on them that is ignited at night, which is kind of cool. Uh, it's just over here and it kind of helps you see where to plug your cord in and anything you're doing with your hands, it just kind of gives you a little extra visibility, which is definitely cool. Now if we go if we go right we'll hit trail five and then you just get right over to Dakers. This is like a little bit longer, but the trails were pretty good, so I just kinda of figured. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, if we were up a couple weeks ago, they were kind of rough, and I was like, man, I hope they're not like that. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm you know, flying over motors to get over because when you go slow, it sucks. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, it's going to suck if it's like that, but it's going to worry about it. Yeah, for sure. Especially, they'll be good for now, and then as soon as you get after lunch, they start to get a little dicey. Yeah. yeah. That's all, yeah, that's all like coming up during the week. Yeah. Oh yeah, during the week is great. Okay, so now for the sleds overall. Um, you guys have definitely seen a lot about the riot. I did end up looking back into the um, error codes. I did end up coming back on. I was able to fix them. There's a spot under the steering column where the wires actually contact the back of the pipe. Aha, there's the culprit. Check that out. So it's gonna be the set of wires up under your pyramid for your steering column. So you can see right there, it just falls right on that wire and uh, starts to burn through them. Go figure, what a dumb design. And they did melt. I was able to kind of pull them back, zip tie them up, and uh, tape them off. That problem's gone away. Uh, I've talked about the decals peeling. You can see right here, this is where the decal peeled. Um, pretty much the only spot on the whole sled, so you know, all in all, not too terrible. Um, I've noticed I haven't had too much of that happen with Skidoo's and Polaris's. It's definitely a little bit more of an Articat thing. And you can see it didn't happen on this side, so I sometimes wonder if that's caused again by the exhaust getting so hot, which has kind of always been an Articat thing as well. Um, I did already go through a set of carbides, the four inches went, but I can't really hold that against the sled. We rode a lot of crap in January, so kind of my own fault. But other than that, sled is definitely improving on gas mileage, able to get 12-ish, um, no problem now. Oil mileage has calmed down a lot, which is definitely a plus. So a lot of the little uh, quirks that I didn't really like around 500 miles and around when it had hit 10 hours, even though it's out of break-in, um, are definitely calming down and getting a lot better. Uh, the ergos are still, I'm still iffy on them. And like I always say, the ergonomics are personal preference. My girlfriend and I both kind of prefer the Polaris. My dad definitely prefers the Riot, and my buddy Kevin was kind of in between both. So, you know, that's my perspective on them, but you can absolutely take it for whatever you want. And uh, you, you, gotta, you gotta figure out what works best for you. <laughs> yeah? yeah. This did have the ice scratchers on it. Those are an absolute godsend, they're awesome. Um, I haven't had any issues with them. I've had a couple instances where I've tried to back up with them down and uh, you know that's just my own fault, but they haven't broken, which is good, even with that uh, mess up on my part. QS3s have been incredible, I love those shocks. Uh, they work their best, in my opinion, on the middle setting, which is cool, so if you want that little bit of extra stiffness, it is there, or if you wanna really just cruise one day, it's there. But, you know, you're not like some other shocks where you're maxed out um, on the lowest setting to try to make it comfortable. And then, you know, there is nothing more if you're really getting beat up one day or anything like that or, you know, the opposite end of the spectrum where you might be super stiffening them up to try to get performance out of them. So, can't say enough about the QS3s. I think if you're getting a Riot, it's worth, uh, worth the upgrade. New switch gear is good. The electric start's an awesome plus. I have to say, I kind of always, in my opinion, was never about it, but having my girlfriend and my dad ride this thing all the time, I can just tell how much easier it makes their day to just be able to hit a button and not have to pull it over. So, awesome that Articat just makes that included on the sleds. Belt life has been good on the Riot. It obviously adjusts on its own, but no squealing. Uh, the belt itself looks really good, so. Uh, absolutely cannot complain about that and the easy use of that is definitely a big plus. 1.3 has been pretty good. Uh, you know, I do wish I got the 1.6, but I think to make this very manageable on trail, it's uh, a good track for that. And that top speed the other day, you know, 101, I'm definitely pretty happy with that. And uh, I kind of wanted to give it a little edge if I could to try to run with the 850s and the 800 players assaults. So I think that that 
could definitely help as time goes on and as uh, I keep continuing to pick up more top speed. Yeah, it is. That's like one of the best straightaways up here. Yeah. You looking for something? Uh, big moves to the restaurant and the lake. Um, yeah, you can go down here and get on trail 10. It's going to be a left and that'll take you pretty much almost there. You're going to take a right at the end of the trail and it's probably a thousand feet. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. No problem. So on the Polaris, I'm at 1,600 miles. Uh, the sled has been really good overall. I had swapped out one set of spark plugs right when the season began just because the sled's had all summer. Always good to have fresh plugs in it. Uh, adjusted my belt deflection. Uh, belt life has been really good. It's been wearing really nicely. I did have a little bit of wearing on my seat. It was kind of like right through here. I'm having trouble seeing it in this light, but uh, definitely something to keep in mind. I don't know as time goes on with these how that they'll uh, hold up. Hoping it picks up on camera. You see right so look at this part of the seat here. It looks really good, really good. Then you get to here and you see kind of where you're obviously on the seat the most. There's all these kind of like wear marks in it. Um, I just kind of wanted to show it off because it could be something that as these axes continue to age could become a problem. But uh, yeah, it's definitely interesting. You can see like nothing, like not too bad. Just like kind of the a random little scuff here or there and then as you get to here you can see a pretty decent wear mark and that's only in about 1900 miles so could end up being a big deal if you keep a assault for like three four thousand miles or any player sled for that kind of distance but for me it hasn't really been the end of the world and we'll see what i end up riding next year and if i'll even have to worry about it the 1.6 awesome track on the sled uh still has really good top speed really good in the deep snow really helps it uh pull itself up on top of the snow and honestly, I would not pick any other track for my personal riding, but I think, you know, with the two inch, you could definitely play a little bit more. And with the 1.3, if you're trying to get a lot of top speed and kind of make it as good a trail slide as you can, uh, this will do it. This is disappointing. I heard we got feet of snow. This ain't shit. Um, I figured we'd head towards inlet. One sec. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, if we want, we can we can try like Moose River Plains for a little bit. I with them riding two up, I just don't. Until we go, get there, I have no idea. Yeah. All right. Does she want to drive? Do you want to try to drive one or no? It's up to you. Yeah, I mean, if you want to drive this one, you can. Woo! It's like, I told her, I'm like, when you do it, it's easier to like, kind of pep it as you go along instead of just pressing the gas because it gets bumped up and goes. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.
Uh, yeah, it wouldn't have been good having her on the side of the trail. No, it's a lot to learn. Yeah. The best is like when you can start by like a big field or something that they can warm yeah, up in. I'm like, I'm like, all I want to do is take you on the fourth lake, you know, and let you go around and mess around. That's what you need, an open spot at first. Yeah, for sure. You're going through trees with bunks and shit up No, there. no way. <laughs> yeah. Those new lights on your guys' lights are bright as hell. Yeah, they're nice. Yep. They're good at night. Yep, they're worth the price. How, how'd it go, champ? Yours is so much easier to maneuver. <laughs> you think so? Oh my god, yeah. It's so much like, uh, like lighter. Hmm. Like yeah, it is a much lighter sled. Like, I think the Articat's just really tall. So yeah. You know, so it's like 5'4". Yeah. It's like, like this. Mm -hmm. This is just so much easier. Like, I don't know if you saw me out there, but I was like, kind of... Like, Getting a little spicy with it? Lean in and get... I have noticed as the overall package, the Assault is pretty stiff, so I always kind of never thought anything of it. I just kind of preferred it that way. But, you know, when my dad gets on it, he definitely talks about how stiff it is, and my buddy Kevin said the same thing, and other people have definitely complained about how stiff Assaults are. Uh, so definitely don't go into an Assault expecting a super soft sled. The Mountainside product spindles have been incredible. I appreciate them for working with me this season. Uh, they're a little difficult to swap out, not so much because of the spindles at all, just because of these CNA Pro skis going on and off. They're just a pain. Um, but the spindles themselves, you know, the bushings adjust super easily. The wide feels incredible. The middle feels really good for still being narrowed up. The full narrow is obviously very narrow, but still trail rideable. Um, obviously, I just wouldn't tell anyone to plan to use it that way all the time if you want to get the most trail performance out of your sled. So definitely feeling a pretty big difference with the full narrow. Um, as I kind of come into corners, that catch point of where like the ski lift happens is just so quick that I really have to set up for a corner. Uh, definitely more than before. So I can see big pluses to the adjustability and I don't think I'd ever want to be typically 40.5 inches wide. It's definitely a pretty narrow ski stance for this sled especially just with how the front end geometry on the Polaris is you know to kind of lift the inside ski but force the outside ski down into it more I think if you had something like an Articat that just kind of handles really flat regardless and I had a narrower stance I don't think it would affect it as much just kind of my two cents on the whole thing but The CNA Pro XCSs have been really good. Um, slow speed steering is definitely very heavy with them. If you're looking at them, I would maybe say go for the Razor or the XPT if you don't want to have to really put a lot of input at slow speeds. And I'm talking like under 15 miles an hour. You just really have to force the skis to turn. But on trail, it's like being on absolute rails. The flotation's really good. It does help the ski maintain edge very well, which I think is a big plus by the uh, profile on the bottom of the ski. Uh, they do wear out just like pro steers. You know, they wear out kind of towards the front, uh, but that could be adjusted with bushings if that's something that bothers you. Uh, but putting them on and off is a pain. So if you do get these spindles, you might want to look at grippers because you'll spend a lot of time trying to put these skis on and off, whereas the grippers and the pro steers just go on and off way more easily. Best gas mileage I've seen on this is 15.6, I believe it was. You know, I can't complain about that at all. The thing's an 850, it's an absolute monster, uh, and it can still get gas mileage, it's that good. So, definitely a big plus. The 850 motor itself has been flawless for me. It is a little finicky when it's cold, and it does kind of uh, almost sound loaded up, but once it actually warms up, it clears its throat and it runs amazing. Uh, I haven't had it actually follow any plugs or anything like that, but you know, you can definitely tell when it's cold that it, it wants to warm up more. Power is amazing. Um, I just cannot say enough about how in the mid range to the top end, the thing is just an animal. Uh, it's like nothing I've ever ridden and uh, really night and day difference from what the 800 was on these sleds before. 
So yeah, that's just kind of my walk around of the two sleds and all the uh, updated gear I've had for this season. For how rough the season was, we definitely made the best of it. Still gonna be pretty happy to get like 800 miles on the sleds. January was a total crapshoot, um, and these sleds handled those crappy conditions really well. So that's kind of always a testament for why I go for the crossover sled and don't try to mess around with anything more mountainous or anything like that. So if you guys have any more questions, let me know down below. I can definitely answer any questions you guys can think of about the sleds. Uh, hopefully we'll get out for a couple more rides and we'll see you guys in the next video.